Hey guys, and welcome to the third through sixth grade Bible class. I am Olivia, and I'm going to be your teacher for the next couple of weeks. I am excited to be with you guys in Bible class again. We have missed you guys terribly in our Sunday night class, but I am excited that we can sit down and study God's Word together in this way. So, for the next couple of weeks, we are going to be looking at Jesus and his life and his ministry from the point of his first miracle on. So, we're going to be looking at it from the time that he turned the water to wine, if you remember. And then we're going to go and follow him as he goes to Jerusalem and then does some more ministry. One of the things that I wanted to do in this Bible class was get you guys involved at home as much as I would be involved here doing this stuff. I mean, as entertaining and fun as I find myself, I want to see you guys. And I want to see you guys learning and participating in Bible class just as much as I will be. So, one of the ideas that we came up with is that as we follow Jesus through his life and ministry, that we would take on and pretend as if we would be a news broadcasting station in Jerusalem and the surrounding areas at the time of Jesus. So this week I've gotten with my brother and Sydney and Josh and we have put together a little clip of what this newscast is going to look like and in this week's obviously we are the actors and we are the people being interviewed but in the weeks to come, I want to see you guys. And I want you guys to act out the stories that we're going to be learning about. I want you to interview some of the people that might have been there and seen and witnessed what happened. And uh, we're going to take it on that perspective. And then you would email those videos or send those videos to us and have your with your parents' permission, obviously. And then we'll put them together and make it into the news broadcast story for the next week. Obviously, like I said, we want to see you guys at home do this. So... Get your parents to participate. Get your younger brothers and sisters or older brothers and sisters to participate. Y'all make these videos. And this will be a really fun way for all of us to get to see each other and interact together, even though we can't physically be together during this time. So, like I said, we are going to do our first lesson, and that is going to be starting in John chapter 2. So get your Bibles out and open over to there. And we're going to talk about Jesus' first miracle. Okay, once you've got your Bibles open to John chapter 2, I'm going to read the first 12 verses here. And if you guys want to read that at home by yourselves, feel free to just mute me and do that at home. But if not, please follow along. Starting in verse 1 of John chapter 2. On the third day, a wedding took place in Canaan of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Why are you involving me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you to do. Nearby stood six stone water jugs, the kind used by the Jews for the ceremonial washing, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled the jars to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of banquets. They did so, and the master of banquets tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out their choice wine first. And then the cheapest wine after the guests have already had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now? What Jesus did here in Canaan of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and disciples. And they stayed there for a few days. You see in these first 12 verses in which Jesus performs his first miracle, it's not a very long story, but it's one that I've always found really interesting and fascinating. You know, Jesus and his mother and his family were all at this wedding and they had run out of wine. And that would have been a pretty 
devastating blow to a wedding or really any type of party back then and even today. Could you imagine if you went to a barbecue or went to a cookout and they didn't have anything for you guys to drink? Nothing. You can have your burger and fries and everything, but we don't have anything for you guys to drink. So this would have been a pretty embarrassing thing for this bride and groom that bride and groom that were having this wedding. So Jesus's mother here was being a fixer. And she goes to Jesus, she goes to somebody who she knows can fix this problem. So she goes to Jesus and she says, Jesus, that wine. He's like, Mom, it's not my time yet. Why are you bringing this to me? Now notice, he doesn't say, Mom, what do you want me to do about it? I can't, I can't help you here. I can't help them. I didn't, I didn't bring any wine with me. So, you know, there's nothing to do. No, he didn't say that. He says, it's not my time yet. Which is really interesting. But being the good son that Jesus is, he fixes this problem. Because Mary doesn't really give him another option. She just kind of looks past him and she looks to the servants and she goes, guys, Need you to do whatever he tells you to do. Whatever he tells you to do, y'all just do it. Okay? He's going to fix this. So Jesus, he fixes his problem. So what he does is he looks and he sees these giant stone water jugs. Now, these jugs would not be your average Kool-Aid pitchers, you know, or your average jug of milk. These jugs, it says that they held 20 to 30 gallons. That They were used for the Jewish ceremonial cleansing. So... These were no joke. You know, I'm not a math person, but there were six of those. And they all each held 20 to 30 gallons. That's a lot of water. This is not something you would use to fill somebody's cup with. It'd be something you would use to fill like a bathtub with. Okay. So a lot of water. And he tells the servants, he says, go and fill those jugs of water up. And it says they do that. They go and fill them up to the brim. Also, that would not have been an easy job. Could you imagine carrying these big stone water things full of 20 to 30 gallons? You wouldn't have had like a truck bed to throw those in the back of or, you know, a four-wheeler to ride back and forth to the well with. No, you'd have to be carrying those things and that, those would have been pretty heavy. But anyways, the servants, you know, they didn't, they didn't question it. They weren't like, man, those are, that's a lot of water. You want us to go fill all those up? No, it says that they went and they filled them up all the way to the brim. So they must have had a little faith in this situation too. And then it says that Jesus just told them, he said, now draw some out and take it to the master of banquets. Okay. So Jesus said, they just filled these water jugs up with water all the way with just water. And Jesus said, all right, now go draw some out and take it to the master of banquets. Um, if I was one of the servants at that point, I would have been like, um, Jesus, I mean, that's cool and all, but, you know, I just, I just saw what we put in here and it, it, it was just water. You know, it wasn't wine, Jesus, but it says that they didn't, I don't mean, we don't have any record of them questioning him. So they did what he asked and they drew some out and they took it to the master of banquets. Now the master of banquets, he takes a sip of this water. It says that he takes a sip of the water that had been turned into wine. Again, not a scientist either, but I know that water doesn't turn into wine. That's just not how that happens. So a miracle had occurred because they put water into these jugs and they drew out wine. So miracle has happened. But then he says something really interesting. It says that the master of banquets tasted this water that had been turned into wine. And he's like, hold up, guys. He calls the groom over. He's like, guys, come here. Most people, when they're serving this wine, you know, they serve the best and the nicest stuff first. And then later on in the day when people are tired and full and not really paying attention, that's when they serve the cheap bad stuff. But you guys waited till right now to serve the best stuff. So not only did Jesus turn regular old water into wine, he turned it into really good wine. John tells us in verse 11, he said, What Jesus did here in Canaan of Galilee was the first th sign through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. So John says, hey, this was Jesus' first miracle and we believed him. 
But one of the things that I've always found the most interesting about this story is how, he said this was the first time that Jesus performed a miracle and he did it at a wedding in Canaan of Galilee. He didn't do it in Jerusalem, which would have been the most metropolitan and most populated city at the time. He did it at this random wedding in this obscure location in Canaan of Galilee. And even on top of that, he didn't even gather the most important people at the wedding. He didn't gather everybody up and say, guys, come around. I've had the servants draw a ton of water and I'm about to do something really cool. So come on and watch me do this. No. It says that the master of banquets didn't even know where the wine had come from, but the servants knew. So only the servants knew and his disciples. So Jesus didn't even try and get a bunch of attention for doing this miracle. He just did this miracle because it was something that his mother asked him to do. In the coming weeks, we are going to study some more about Jesus and his ministry and his life. And we're going to see more miraculous signs and wonders that he did. And I want you guys to think back to this story and remember that Jesus didn't do these miracles so that people would look at him and be like, oh my word, he is so cool. He didn't do it for the Instagram likes or the TikTok views or the YouTube subscribers. He did it to glorify God. And he did it to show other people that he was who he says he was. He wasn't like you and I. He was from heaven. And he had powers and glory that we didn't possess. And he teaches people about God and shows people the glory of God by doing these miracles. And that's what we're going to learn about in the coming weeks. Right now, we are going to watch our news video that we made for this week. And then after this video, I'm going to give you guys your homework assignments because I want to see you in the videos next week. So, without further ado, enjoy News Channel 12. Good evening, and thank you for joining us on News Channel 12. My name is Mary, because that's very common around here. As always, we're here to bring you all the news that is news around Judea, that place that starts with an S and ends in a merry eh, and Galilee, assuming anything good ever comes out of there. We'll start off tonight's broadcast with a lighthearted story that comes from Cana in Galilee, oddly enough, where friends and family attending a wedding got a little more than they bargained for. Local wedding planners were starting to scramble when they realized their party was just about out of wine. However, onlookers said an unlikely guest son was able to save the day. While over here, Mary, you know, Joseph's wife, talking to her boy about how this party is about to go bust, and he's all like, what do you want me to do about it? It's not time or something like that. And she just gives him the old mama stink eye, you know, and looks at the caterers and tells them to just do whatever he says. That's when the man started giving strange instructions to the catering crew to start filling a bunch of water pots with water and simply take them off to the wedding planner. The servants, they bring me this wine and I was astonished. I thought we'd run out and this time it was good. We usually save the bad stuff for the end of the party. We're running low on water, though. I'm not sure where all that went off to. Do you know where your guest Jesus went? Joseph's son? He was here? He must have left. Went back to Capernaum. Fascinating story. This guy seems like a bit of a wine bibber to me. We'll follow up with this Jesus if this turns out to be any more than a parlor trick. Now let's turn it over to Malachi with our seven-day forecast. Malachi, what does the future look like? All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the News Channel 12 broadcast that we put together for you all. Next week, it's going to be your turn. So your homework assignment is to read what happens next in Jesus' story after he leaves Capernaum. And you're going to do that in John chapter 2. Starting, I think it's, yep, in verse 13. And you're going to read through verse 25. And this is Jesus in the temple courts. And he does some interesting stuff when he's there. So you guys get with your parents and your brothers and sisters and read this story and then act it out. I want to see you guys' interpretation of what happens here. And I'm also sending out a script for your parents to print off or read for you guys. And you guys use that script and send me those videos too. That'll be some of you guys being the interviewers, some of you guys being the interviewees of people that were maybe there and in the temple courts at the time. And then if it's all right, send them to me. I'll give you my email address and phone number. And we're going to put you guys in next week's broadcast of News Channel 12. 
this will be a fun way for us to all get involved and do these classes together. Like I said, as entertaining as we find ourselves, we want to see you all. So send me those videos and look forward to watching and seeing you guys next week.